Hi, you guys. Uh, Pastor Mark here, and we'll, we'll just jump into a few things. Uh, I am here with Jeremiah Wright, who is the uh, founding, right, counselor, therapist, guy for Wright Directions, wait, I mean, counseling services here in town. I first heard of Jeremiah some years back with some folks who were going to this counselor that was really helpful. <laughs> and it was him! It was him! True and story. so, I don't know, through, through that, uh, those interactions with some friends and some different things, uh, long story short, um, we're here this evening to have a dialogue about emotional health. Now, before we get there, Jeremiah, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? How long have you been in practice? Go. Hi. Hi there, Jeremiah. Nice to meet all of you. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in tonight. Hopefully we'll uh, be able to share something that will uh, be beneficial. And uh, just an introduction, I am a marriage and family therapist licensed here in Indiana. I uh, started a practice Five years ago, we have made it five years uh, in practice called Right Directions. We're downtown South Bend. Uh, four other uh, people around me there uh, at our practice, three other licensed therapists and a student in training as well. And we're just so excited to be a part of, of the community and doing God's work here. And we've got a variety of different therapists in our office uh, with different specialties and uh, from children to couples to individuals families, you name it. Uh, and since uh, all the things that have happened this year, we've even offered some online services mm -hmm. and had to uh, grow and be challenged and stretched a little bit that way. And uh, so that's a little Perfect. bit of what, what's going on there. It's distinctively Christian counseling, correct? So we offer that distinctively Christian counseling for those who are seeking that. Okay. Uh, we offer solid advice for those who are not looking okay. for that perspective yeah. uh, we we do not advertise that we are distinctly christian okay we get referrals from psychiatrists family physicians friends you name it uh, but we've so. talked enough you're a christian absolutely either that or you're faking it really well in conversation oh, <laughs> don't get me started how, how long have you been a christian jeremiah so uh i met the lord when i was three years old Nice. Yes, and I uh, didn't want to go to hell. That's the true story. It's right a great there. reason to be a Did Christian. Did not want to go to hell. I heard a lot about it, and I was not interested. <laughs> Rededicated my life a few years later, and 12 years old, and I've never looked back, and I've grown up around oh. church, and uh, okay. I've uh, had a solid foundation there, solid relationship. A lot of people go through in their late teens, early 20s, a questioning time, and that's very normal, but I've been so blessed to uh, have good mentors around me, people to walk me through those challenging nice. times and uh, yeah okay absolutely well our direction this evening is to talk about emotional health and some of you may remember we did this uh, we invited Jeremiah here last spring somebody said it was April maybe when we started last year, you remember last year, 2020? Mm -hmm. Some of you have forgotten and you like to forget it. But with some of the struggles from 2020, when uh, uh, the COVID pandemic just first began, we were getting direction of being isolated. We were canceling church for things. Anyway, uh, Jeremiah and I entered into a dialogue. Then we did a link a live thing to talk about how to navigate the tension that was happening you know, eight, nine, ten months ago. And lo and behold, <laughs> although they said, right, the pandemic, that would all get under control in a, in a two-week or four-week period. Here we are, ten months later, and it just feels like our world has not really settled down any. Uh, not only do you still have the pandemic stuff happening, but you add to that the reality of the political tension that we've been living in, the unknowns of that, and all those things. So we thought, let's bring Jeremiah in again and revisit now with what we're facing in our culture today. Now, what are things, what's our official question? What are keys to staying, I'm reading it, 
What are keys to staying or getting emotionally healthy in these crazy times? That's the question that I have that we're going to address. I'm going to pray for a minute, and then we're just going to have a conversation about maybe some things that can be helpful to us all. So I'm going to pray. Father, pray for everybody uh, joining us through every platform. Um, and I'm praying, God, that as Jeremiah shares, and I may share some things, but as, these, as this conversation unrolls, mostly will you use the words or speak to people in such a way that we can uh, be emotionally better because of our time here together, spiritually better because of our time in this conversation. Uh, basically, it's my prayer, Father, we need your help in order to be helpful. So help us, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen. One note before we get started, as we do this, if you have a question that you would like us to address, just write your question in any of the comments, whatever platform you're on, and we've got some amazing people keeping track of that as we walk through it. So, get good enough intro? Should we get started? So. Ready, Jeremiah? Absolutely. What are keys? <laughs> what are the secrets, the keys to staying or getting emotionally healthy in these crazy times? What would you start out with? Well, I take a four-prong approach to this, and I like to uh, look at all areas of our system. And I start with, uh, I call it bio, psycho, social, and spiritual. Say that again. Bio. Bio. Psycho. Are anybody taking notes? I wonder if you guys are taking notes. Bio. Write this down. Bio, <laughs> psycho, social, and spiritual. Bio, psycho, social, and spiritual. And when I say psycho, we're going to get into the emotional there too. So psycho-emotional, but okay. anyhow, bio. So we talk about the importance of taking care of our physical body with the bio. So things like, hey, you just took a drink. You know, making sure we are getting enough water, those kinds of things. Um, taking care of our physical body. What are we eating? Are we getting enough sleep? Um, are we sleeping too much? Um, are we getting enough exercise? Mm -hmm. Are we uh, just getting out of bed, going to our desk, sitting there all day, watching a video screen, whether it's school or work, and then we go from there, and what are we going to do next? Well, we're tired now because we sat and stared at a screen all day. So okay. I don't know about you, but I want to watch some Netflix now. So then I'm going to go rec recline. And so I didn't get up and move at all uh, oftentimes. So making sure we're getting some activity is, is huge. Uh, as you might imagine, I do this all day long. I sit all day. So sitting, uh, got to stretch our legs some, got to walk around some. And uh, that's important. So taking care of ourselves physically huge do you do you tell i'm assuming when you're doing therapy with people like that's not just something that you come up with just for this conversation you tell people that all it's day part of their day. assignment it is it is we need to stay physically active and the another thing i'm going to talk about in each of these categories is the importance of setting goals for ourselves oh yeah go with and, that uh, <clears throat> so when we talk about uh staying healthy setting goals for ourselves not just the uh it's, it's january you know what happens in january Oh, New Year's resolutions. Absolutely. Yes. No. Are you still holding to any of those resolutions? I don't know. It? I don't know. Don't talk to me about that. Okay. All right. Well, I, I actually, I you did. invited me here for a free therapy <laughs> session. Did you, not, did you no, forget? Do not therapize me, okay. which is not even a word. No. 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 Uh, actually, there are some things, though. New Year's a, new, uh, a good time, I think. To, it's a good time, time to set some goals. It's new beginnings. And so it's okay. You don't have to call them a resolution, but some goals for ourselves. And a lot, of, a lot of what I've seen come through my practice is people have been stagnant. They're stuck. They're at home. They're not getting out. They're not doing things. And so we're going to start with, what are you doing physically? Uh, I've had a lot of clients lately that don't feel like uh, they can go to a gym to exercise. Right. They're, they're unsure about where they can get that physical activity. And there's a shortage on treadmills. I had a client the other day tell me they cannot get a treadmill. There's, there's a shortage of them. So where do I go? What do I do? Um, I noticed you guys have a parking lot out here. You can come out here and take yeah. a walk. Uh, you can you... walk in our parking lot, everybody. Yeah, yeah absolutely. 
Um, other clients have been starting to do some yoga, some stretching, that can be really helpful. If you can't leave your space for whatever reason, you could work on some good stretching and right. get moving, um, walking around wherever you live, that's, that's huge. Are you seeing, well, so you're, you're just basically challenging people, because I know there are probably some people watching today um, that are pretty limited because they're trying to stay inside. But, but generally, there's still a bunch of outdoors Absolutely. that you would say, don't be so, af don't be so afraid that you're, you, I, I guess I would say, you got to find a way, folks, to exercise, to get out and Absolutely. do something. We live in America. We have coats. Go outside. Today was 40 degrees outside. So you, that's part of what you challenge people with is physical activity. One of my clients went ice, fish, ice fishing today. I mean, there are outdoor activities we can do outside. It's oh, amazing. gosh, there's four guys watching, poking Can't their happen. wife, saying, See, he said I could do this. Jeremiah said I should go ice fishing. Go ice fishing, yes. Um, I won't be out there doing that. Okay. That does not interest me whatsoever. Right. But, hey, um, I'm interested in orange little golf balls. We can hit those in the snow. That works for me. Oh, you know, okay. we, can, we can get active so that way. So do something physical. Get so that's out. the bio... That's bio. That There's one more element to the bio I want to make sure that we're talking about with staying healthy, especially with our emotional health. If you are supposed to be taking medication, make sure you're oh. taking it routinely. Oh, that makes when sense. We, if we get out of our routines at all, or get into some not so great routines, we can get off track. You know, it takes three weeks to start a new good routine. You know how what? long? It, oh no! If you should tell people that in case they don't know that. Just in case, it, it takes, takes three weeks to start a new habit. Three Do you know weeks. how long it takes to break one of those routines? <laughs> a day. One day. Six minutes. Literally one day. If you get off track one day, that's all it takes to break it. And so making sure that we're being very, very regimented with taking medicine, if we're supposed to be taking medicine. Okay. Um, there's these really cool things. I don't have mine with me. You've got a phone. You can put reminders oh, and yeah. take your medicine. There's yeah. really cool reminders out there. I have a friend who is really good at graphs and stuff, and he gets an amazing amount of joy checking a box on some of his thing. He liked, he exercised and he drank water and he hugged yeah. his wife and he called one of his kids and he, he you know who you are if you're watching. <laughs> but it's been a challenge to me because that brings to him moments of accomplishment mm -hmm even in the midst of these kinds of times. And he's actually, I think he still is, he's been working from home since last March mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. So do you have anything, well, I guess you're talking about it specifically, because there's probably a significant part of the population right now, your, your forced outside stuff, you're not driving to work, mm -hmm. you're just plugging into working at home. Yes. What's one, what's another thing you'd say to them? Maybe not. I guess it's get active. Get active um, and be in good routines. Set okay. up some healthy routines for yourself. Get up at a normal time. I'm going to oh. talk about the other parts, the uh, other things you can do in your daily routine. However, make sure you're getting up at a reasonable time, going to bed at a reasonable time. If your routine right now doesn't require you to have set hours, still a really good oh. thing for you not to be staying up till 2 a.m. Um, if you're in school right now, staying up till 2 a.m. is a really not a good idea. Okay, um, Because that sets up, people up, sets you up for an emotional challenging the next... Absolutely. Day. Okay. Absolutely. So routines. So we're gonna, Bio. Go ahead. We're going to talk next about our psycho. So this is our mind psycho. and our emotions. So... We spend a lot of time talking bio, but we're going to talk a lot more about our mind and our emotional thing, what we can be doing to get healthy in our mind. And so I want to start actually first with talking about what if we're not healthy and how would I know if I'm not healthy? How would I know what to do if I, I wasn't sure? And so I talk to people uh, and I want to talk to our audience today about how, do you, how would you know if That's you a great needed question. to get some help? How would you know if you needed to take medicine? How would you know if you had gotten enough sunshine? Do you live in northern Indiana? You didn't get enough sunshine. You didn't sunshine. get enough sunshine. You know, those, those are... Did you go to college to figure that out? I did. Can you believe <laughs> that? Yes. Wait, I interrupted. So those were good. I How do I know if I'm 
unhealthy. Is that kind of what you were? That's where I was starting. So, you know, there's a couple of uh, resources I point people to. You can look on several websites. There's the uh, Institute for Mental Health. Uh, there is Mayo Clinic. They've got some good resources. And even uh, Simple as Psychology Today will list out some symptoms for, you know, how do I know if I'm, if this is serious anxiety? How do I know if this is depression? Wow. That, and so some of those symptoms we should be looking at. Are we having difficulty concentrating? Have we had sleep disturbance? Have we had an appetite change? Am I not enjoying things I used to enjoy? I don't really want to, maybe I don't really want to be social anymore. I'd rather just stay home. Yeah. Whoa, you haven't been social in a week. Why would you okay. want to stay home? So they're practical. What do they call, what do they call those things? It, instruments, there are... There are in what? inventories. Inventories. So take, take, an, an take an inventory. Very easy. You can probably Google online inventory. There are three people doing it right now. They're doing they it. They're by you guys. You're yeah, done. It was nice seeing you. Um, All right. Can I interject something in the psycho? No, wait. We're in psycho. We're in psycho. Go for it. One of the things that, has, that helps, because I know this is Pastor Mark talking. So Jeremiah can tell me I'm all wrong later. But uh, I know a lot of us are Christians. Biblically, it helps me to remember that trouble was predicted by Jesus as part of life. And so it helps me in the midst of a pandemic and against political tension, all that stuff. When, the, when something comes in that's difficult or wrong, I try not to let it surprise me because because that's just a part of life. And so I try to keep pretty centered with my theology or perspective so when something really nasty happens or something that's disappointed me, I, rem I, I try to go to the place of, don't forget, Mark, that's just part of life, which changes the detriment to my emotion. If I think everything is supposed to be perfect, then if I don't get pickles on my burger, I'm mad. But if they screw up my pickle on my burger order, and I kind of had a, have a more like, that's okay, it's just part of life. Does that make any sense? Absolutely. It, set, it doesn't set me up for quite the emotional mm -hmm. whoops. Um, oh, Bible verse, because the Bible says... Um, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds. And if you're a part of the Vineyard family, you've probably heard us talk about that. So somewhere in there, the difficulties that we're facing, even uh, economically, socially, politically, all those things that are happening, um, God wants to work something good for us in the midst of it. Absolutely. So, all right, I interjected there. Absolutely. But go on with your... Bio well, we're psycho. talking psychological and emotional and uh, just kind of assessing where we're at and how we're doing and having some feedback. You know, you have someone in your life that can give you some feedback and bounce things off of. Um, I'm going to talk a lot about the social uh, needs in our lives, but emotionally, you know, how do you know how you're doing and are you present with yourself enough? Are you able to assess yourself? I'm really struggling. I've been losing my temper more. Um, oh. I, I, I'm just not quite myself. And to be honest, I haven't been myself for quite a while. Maybe I need to go talk to somebody. You know, and it doesn't have to be our office, but start by just talking to a friend or finding out, you know, where, have you gone to talk to somebody? You know, how would I know? Like, is this important? Should I talk to my family physician? Do I need to get some medicine? Uh, what do I do next? And now a step, a step even before the talking to a therapist or family physician, I'm, am I right in saying every time i say the word right i think of your last name thank Jeremiah you right welcome to my so whole am life. i right okay my whole life am i right though in saying uh and maybe you'll talk about this with social kinds of things we should regularly have people that were bouncing authentically who, how we're doing with correct that Absolutely. should be a regular part of our life yes now, what do you mean by regular? How often would regular be for... That's what I'm going to ask you. Oh, that's great. So how, yeah, how regularly should I have an authentic... And by the way, you know, at, at Vineyard, we try to be authentic, but like it's a good thing to be authentic. Mm. But talk to us about how often I should be doing at least a serious 
vulnerable, here's where I'm at conversation with a good friend or something. Well, honestly, it would be great if we had it daily. Daily. Daily would be awesome. But if it's not happening daily, a couple of times a week would be great. If it's not happening once a week, we're probably starting to drift into huh. possibility for pretending, kind of faking oh, it. Oh, talk about that. Faking pretending it. is bad. Fake it till you make it. We're going to get through this. I don't feel like it, but I, you know, I'm, you know, there's a lot of people have been faking it, well, since March. We're going to get through this, aren't we? I think we're going to, it's going to be great. We're going to be fine. We're going to, and it just keeps dragging and dragging. Wow. And, yeah. So faking is not good. We want to have those authentic conversations. We want people to really know us and be in those. So for some of us watching, this might be a real easy takeaway. You, what part of your assignment needs to be? Part of our assignment needs to be sometime in the next few days, you need to sit down with someone, FaceTime with someone, and you can tell them, I just need to have an authentic conversation about life. Uh, and hopefully you have somebody in your life that you can do that, maybe a small group leader, friend, Christian friend, hopefully, uh, one, of the, one of the staff people, if we can help you have an authentic conversation, that's really good. Don't go the next, two weeks without talking to somebody. Absolutely. That's good stuff. We need something on a very regular basis. Absolutely. Um, if we, how about this? What if people don't have relationships in their life? Maybe uh, people have moved away or maybe they've kind of gotten disconnected or they've gotten mad about what's going on on social media so they've unfriended a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. and yeah, what do distanced. we do there? What do we do? Well, something. We need to be proactive. Okay. Remember how I said we need to be active? Now we need to be proactive when it comes to our social. Uh, we, we skipped over some of those emotional things, by the way. We'll, yeah, go. We'll, we'll want to we'll Okay, wanna we'll go back. I'll make a note. Emotional we'll go back to the emotional thing. They're all, t I'm a social person, so um, I'm a people people. I don't know if you've ever heard of those. The, the people people are kind of, they're kind of weird. But I, I actually get energy from being around people. And so if I was home and only staring at a computer screen right now, mm. I would be really struggling. Um, in fact, when I was doing mostly video sessions, it was exhausting. I get so much energy out of being in the same, in someone else's presence and, and joking around. When I had to stare at a screen and, and I found that I just hold still in front of the screen. I wasn't moving around, and, you know, yeah. so now I've kind of, you know, I'll even block myself. If I have to be on a computer, I'll, I'll block my picture and I'll just interact with that person. I'll be more myself because I found if I was staring at my vision, my silhouette yeah. on there, whatever, it was not I, I, I couldn't be me and so you want to be able to relax be yourself with mm. people interact with them so there's a takeaway there for some of us you have got to figure out we have got to figure out how we keep a social life even in the midst of these challenges yes yeah so you've so you've got to figure that out friendless is not good no uh, and for some people, this, the pandemic really, I think, probably jerked their social life around. Absolutely. And now I'm going to say some stuff. Some of you might. For some of you and for some of us, it's time to stretch a little bit in that social thing because we pulled back for so long. And you can go for a walk with somebody outside. You're not, you can meet with someone who... Is, we may have to test that a little bit. You've got to be with people. The only, I've said this before, the only risk of COVID or some of the political tension is the only risk is not a health risk physically. There are huge risks emotionally to this isolation stuff. Absolutely. Isolation leads to anxiety, leads to depression, leads to all kinds of deeper, much more challenging things to deal with. Right. It is not good for man to be alone. You might have heard that. Oh, that it's a once. Bible verse. Look might, at him. I told you he was a Christian. Might have heard that once. I, yeah, it is not good. Okay. Um, and the other thing I want to talk about emotional, about what's been going on. <clears throat> Maybe you've had some grief in your life. Maybe you've gone through some losses. Whether those losses would be the loss of a loved one. Uh, maybe a job loss. Loss of some of those social interactions. Losses are huge. And they cause grief. And they have real symptoms. And when we just fake it till we make it, we pretend that everything's okay, we don't have anyone to bounce it off of, we can get overwhelming waves of grief. So what helps, so for the person who's dealing with a loss, 
What is a practical thing that they can do so that tomorrow they might not be as grief stricken? That puts you on the spot. What's That's, a practical thing we can do? That is a huge question. <laughs> uh, we, we could spend hours and there are many books written on what we could do. One is we could read a book on this and oh. see what is normal, what are some practical things. But we need to be talking to people. We need to share what's going on. Um, and uh, we need to be honest with ourselves about what's going on. I am grieving and I am sad and it's okay to be sad. Um, can, I, can I throw one out there that's probably not recommended therapy? Oh, but I'm gonna throw, throw one out me there. a softball. Let's you ready? That. Here's what I would do. Watch, this is, just watch a sad uh, <laughs> Disney movie where, where something really sad is happening and then just ball your face off for like 15 minutes. Is that, is that what you tell people? Um, it, and so that's my mm -hmm. lack of professional mm -hmm. because sometimes it, you, at least you, you expressed your, like, I was really sad and so then just ball. I'm so trying to be. I'm if you go to, to him and you go to his folks, they probably are gonna give you some better advice, but I'm telling you, it, it, it works for me. Just mm. ball uncontrollably for a few minutes mm -hmm. by yourself and then you'll go, mm -hmm. I guess I, w I must have been really sad inside. Mm. Okay, Keith Crane's here and I'm not sure he's buying that one either. <laughs> so, all right. That's cute. <laughs> Did you say cute? <laughs> That's cute. He just said cute. He thought my advice was cute. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right, uh -huh. give us something. Uh, where are we at? Emotion, uh, we were so working on, we were finishing emotional. We, we if, kind of went, went back into emotional to make sure we tidied up there. Grief is huge. Again, don't be alone in this, okay. sharing that. If you've gone through a job loss, and I'm working with several clients that have gone through job losses, even at, you know December 22nd, you got let go from your job. That's a big deal. That's gonna cause you some grief. That's gonna be hard. It's gonna create some fear. It's gonna create some uncertainty. And you need to talk about that. You need to be in community. You need to have people around you encouraging you, letting you know, hey, you are loved. We are praying for you, thinking of you. Hmm. And oh, by the way, here's my buddy's phone number. They might be willing to give you a job interview. Okay, yep. that's, that's huge. Like, Plug for, uh, for small group. I know that uh, my wife and I are in a small group now. And we've had a few people in the group, which is just part of life, go through a, a loss or whatever. It's helpful to have a group of people that say, hey, I'm aware that, that this happened and we're praying for you. And uh, that special care that can happen in those smaller communities. It's huge. Absolutely needed. Um, one of the things that's happened in a lot of, a lot of different churches, uh, small groups have gone to online only or people have stopped getting together. And that's, it's left so many people just feeling alone in their struggles and yeah, yeah it's now huge we, stay connected stay connected and we're by the way in a couple weeks uh church family maybe three weeks or so now we're doing groups a launch in the middle of february and uh, there are openings in groups and if you're interested in starting a group now is a great time to really help uh, yourself and other people by thinking about doing a group that group launch weekend is february 20th and 21st and if you want to get something started before then just uh, comment with Keith Crane here and like we'll we'll see what we can do super helpful so let's try to get to your bio psycho can we get to number three social social we were on social we've we've already gotten we'll three out of four three out of four we're gonna leave room some for questions we, we actually are gonna leave room for questions okay so go People. ahead last one is spiritual Oh, good. Yeah, I thought you might like that one. Uh, and I'm not going to profess to be a pastor over here and give all the spiritual advice. So, like, like, I'm you not, should give some pastoral give, advice, and I'll say, that's cute. Yeah, exactly. You know? <laughs> how, how about this? Read your Bible. Isn't that cute? Oh, that's good. That Isn't is that so cute. cute? Yes. No, that's actually really good. Okay. Oh, man. So, highly recommend, like we talked about with our physical body and our mind and taking care of our mind. Um, we need to be taking care of ourselves spiritually and making sure that we're doing some things to grow. So what does that look like in your life? Does that look like listening to this guy on a, on a, on a rerun, a, a, a rewind of last week or six months ago? Or does that look like uh, listening to some worship music? Does that look like uh, reading your Bible 
maybe hopping on your app and, and what's, uh, what do I have for a, a devotional today? Yeah. What does that look like? But having some kind of a daily routine, I, even a weekly routine. So daily, um, we have been so, you know, going through COVID was, it, people have decided, some people have made some, some really healthy habits through this time. Oh. And we have had a wonderful blessing in our household through this time that we get together every morning and do a devotional around the, the breakfast table. Nice. Just intentional. Kids are going to be home anyways. Um, so, hey, let's have a devotional. And uh, that, they're, now they're out of bed okay. at a reasonable time. They're not getting up at uh, 10 o'clock, yeah. rolling out of bed and staring at a screen, and they haven't even brushed their hair yet, right? Get up and do a devotional and uh, pray together. That's a daily thing. And then weekly, um, I like to, uh, different days throughout the week, I'll alternate. You know, on my drive into work, I'm either listening to worship music or I might listen to a podcast. There's different things to do to sharpen yourself spiritually, sharpening your mind as well while you're yeah. doing that. And you can imagine with the work that I'm doing, it can be pretty exhausting. So I need to make sure that I'm energizing and filling and getting mm -hmm. ready for the work I'm going to be doing. And so... I, I got to imagine for all three people that are watching us out there right yeah, now, uh, we had three leave, but are we at like the four or five? Oh, now? yeah, we're up to six. Okay. That maybe they need to be in a routine in their life as well, growing spiritually. Okay. Um, we, can't, we can't grow if we're only doing church on the weekend. Right. Uh, isn't that cute? Th yeah, that was a cute. Thanks. That's really cute. Yeah. Well, th there, if, you, if some of you guys know this, but um, uh, Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread. I don't think that that has to do with just no. our physical bread, although it applies to that, which is your whole physical side. Absolutely. But daily spiritual feeding, disciplines, things that will help us, mm -hmm. I think will affect mm -hmm. our spiritual, affect our soul. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, uh, go with one more comment, and then we're, get, we're getting ready. If we have any questions, we'll try to deal with some questions. So one thing I wanted to mention over all four of these categories, goals, really yep. important to set goals for ourselves. How am I going to grow? How am I going to be challenged? You know, we've had through uh, political unrest and through uh, COVID related things and um, maybe again, job losses, school. Are, am I, are we going to school this week? Are we not going to school this week? Uh, maybe you're a teacher through this and God bless you if you're a teacher through this. Um, we are praying for you and really appreciate our teachers out there. This has been exhausting for yep. folks that are back and forth. But along with that, the third uh, point I want to make is just making sure we're exercising really good boundaries for ourselves. You know, um, physical limitations. If you struggle with addictions at all, make sure that you are keeping really good boundaries and accountability. Back to that social and see these interchange. They interact with each other. Bio, psycho, social. They are all interacting and in the spiritual dimension on all of those. So really good boundaries around yourself. Um, Example. How about... Boundaries. What's a boundary? Um, what? Limit your exposure on social media. Limit your social media exposure. Okay. Yes. Uh, what happens if you have too much exposure? Things get bad. Isn't that a cute answer? Isn't that cute? No, well... Well, it can create a lot of stress. Oh, yeah. A lot of anxiety. I don't know... I'm not on social media. I, I've made a decision in my life. I'm not interested. <gasps> yeah. I just lost th three more people. You know, Man. I had that in my notes as I was thinking, what do we need to talk about with, with emotional health and the four things? It came to me like this. Um, I think we need to be aware of minimizing or limiting the bad news inputs in our life with, the, with political tensions, and pandemic situations, it was probably a month ago-ish. I got up, I was getting ready, I had the news on, and I realized, th this, the thought came to my mind, this is the same news I listened to yesterday, which is the same news I listened to the day before. It was 95% repeated bad news stuff, and I, at that point, remember thinking, you used the word boundary, boundary. I'm not, I'm not turning this on in the morning again. And since that time, I've limited my news input to once a week, I'll catch up. But <laughs> a lot of times when you catch up, 
You did just, you did, it was the same thing that was happening a week ago. So Absolutely. that limitation, because that's, the Bible talks about if your eyes are good, then your whole body will be full of light. What we're watching, if it is consistently negative, fearful, attack, all that stuff's coming through what I've heard some people call an, your eye gate or your mm -hmm. ear gate. All that stuff gets into mm -hmm. us. Absolutely. And so putting, taking control and making yeah. some limits. So putting some boundaries around yourself. Boundaries. Limits and boundaries. Boundaries is the term. Creates a little margin in your life then. You know, put the boundary back here. Now we got a little more room in our life. Nice. So, otherwise, we can get really tired. Right. So... Speaking of tired, they're probably tired of us just rambling yeah. here. Maybe All right, we're going to try questions. to field some questions. Uh, what do we got? This is Pastor Keith. He's got, this is the voice of Pastor Keith. Hey, Vineyard. So a couple of questions that popped in. Uh, one of them is COVID causes such fear in people. What do you do to get rid of that fear or at least keep it in check? Repeat the question. What do you do to keep the fear of COVID at least in check? What are some thoughts you guys might have on that? So, um, not to be obnoxious, I hope I don't offend anybody by saying this, but COVID, I don't think COVID actually causes fear. It's just a virus. Our fear of getting the virus and fear of the consequences of getting that can get really big really fast and so how do we contain that a few things we can do I mean, you, were, you and I were kind of kicking this around earlier maybe educating ourselves a little bit you know uh, not every single person who gets COVID dies right yeah we were talking about this before just in more of casual conversation okay. I, I think it would be important the Bible says by the way the truth will set you free and instead of just listening to the news, we really should have solid numbers so that we know that, and even when we say this, it sounds funny. By the way, folks, in case you didn't know, not everybody's dying of COVID. Statistically, uh, it's important to have the reality of, I heard a, I heard a physician say this not too long ago, and it helped me. It was just this little bit, bit of news. And he said, just to be clear, it's really, really hard to die of COVID. Now, can I frame that in America? But it, and he may have overstated it one way because there are people that die of it. But the flip side, it was helpful to hear, oh, it keeps a balanced view of the statistics that we hear Although recently we just heard, we, which is tragic, we went over the 400,000 people have died. Mm -hmm. By the way, they're clarifying in COVID-associated deaths. They're beginning to clarify the language. But uh, don't just look at that number, right? Is it 24 million people? Is that the right number? I think it is. 24 million people have come COVID positive. And is that the right number? I think it's 24 million. And they didn't die. See, we don't ever, we don't hear. Somebody out there right now is looking at that number. Yeah, dude, it's 24.4 million. This is maybe an old number. This was a week or two ago or something. Mm -hmm. But it's good to keep a, a, the right perspective on that. So I don't know if that helps at all because the question was how do I'm, people how do get really afraid? Absolutely. And it is serious. There have been many, many people who have died, obviously. Um, but bad news spreads but faster than oh, good news. Right. And if it bleeds, it leads. <gasps> what was that? I'm not on social media or I would totally tweet Did that. Did you hear that? I'm just saying. If it bleeds, it leads. So bad news spreads. Bad fast. news. The bad news keeps us tuned into the news if we're not careful and don't do boundaries. So keep some boundaries around wow. that. Wow. So keep perspective. The biggest thing is keep perspective. Yes, it, it, there can be a lot of anxiety. We've all been through this, I'm sure, all to different degrees. You know, oh, I get a tickle in my throat. I wonder if I wonder <laughs> if I'm getting sick. I might have. I'm sweating. Maybe I have a fever. Some of you right now are going. I feel that way. Been there, done I, this. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I've been there, done this. It's 
we all go through moments and then we have to just regain perspective. I'm okay. And no matter what I go through, I will not go through this alone. My Heavenly Father is going to see me through this. Yeah. And again, even, and another thing I didn't even touch on, some people have to go through isolation because they've had an exposure or they're being quarantined. Oh, right. And that is miserable. Um, going through this and being sick, can, I, it's, it's miserable. Um, others, maybe they're not that sick, but they're, now they're very bored. And that is yeah. not pleasant either. So Okay. There's some ideas. Got another question? Yeah, so you both touched on us a little bit, but I'd like for you to both maybe expand on it a little bit. You talked a little bit about kind of guarding your gates. You know, you talked about social media. Mark, you talked about news. Do you have any other practical tips on, like, what are some things we could do to actually make sure we are not letting too much information into our lives? Wow. You don't do social media. Nope, no social You know, media. I guess I just have one thing. If you, uh, two things. One, you've got to be honest. We are better if we're honest with ourselves about how many, how much we're consuming mm. some of those boundary things. Absolutely. The second thing is have the guts to ask someone who knows you well and say, I want you to tell me, do you think I have healthy boundaries or not? Mm. And let them, say, let them speak into your life. Does that help? Yeah. I would try that. Or if you're really bored, maybe you could read the book Boundaries. That's a shameless oh. plug right there. Is that your is that your book? That's not my book. That is not my book. If well, there it is a were, book called I would be yep. making a lot of money off of recommending that. That's one of the most recommended books I go through in my office. Highly recommend Boundaries. it. That will help you to see. Do how do I do I need better margin in, in these areas in my relationships? And yeah, hey, can I give you some stats on the fear thing? that I, I just wrote down. These were things that helped keep my fear of COVID in balance. By the way, I already had it and I lived, which so I'm, I'm okay. Um, uh, for most of you, mo it, here's, what I, here's what I, most Americans are still most likely to die of natural causes, chiefly heart disease, one in six chance, or cancer, one in seven. Way more likely to die of that than COVID. Well, what I thought everybody was dying of COVID. No, COVID, um, for the people that, are, that can be more concerned, actually they push that to, to 70 or older. Those are the people that are more likely to get significantly sick. If you're under 20, the reality, the fatality risk of you dying of COVID is the same percentage as if you, die, if you took a trip of 75, 7,500 mile trip. So if you were gonna drive from the West Coast on a vacation to the East Coast and back to the, if you did that three times, 7,500 miles, the risk of you dying in that trip is the same as you dying of COVID. That, does that make sense? Did that make any sense, Keith? Seven, so people now are adding not just the challenging statistics, but the positive statistics to help give people perspective. Mm -hmm. um, uh, anyway, just get a hold of some of those things that pull us out of that fear. Or just give us a realistic perspective. Should we continue to be wise and wash our hands? Yeah, if you, yeah I think that's great. Well, at least once a day, right? Yeah. Oh, but, I think that's, yeah. Yeah, wash your hands. Mm -hmm. Use some sanitizer. <laughs> Okay, another question. This was a little bit maybe, uh, you've touched on some of these things already, but do you have any tips to motivate us to do the things we know we're supposed to do? And for example, how to get active when we're always tired or push ourselves to get into, into a group if we are shy? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> what are some tips to motivate us? Um, nobody wants to hear this. Just do it. Just do it. You gotta do it the first time. You've gotta determine inside of yourself that you are tired of being tired. Yeah, you gotta get sick and tired. I am yeah. sick and tired of the position I'm in. Whether I wanna make changes in my physical, I wanna make ch changes in my relationships, I'm tired of the position that I'm in. I'm not gonna settle for this anymore. Yeah. And so I have to take a risk. I might actually be even more tired if I exercise. 
but there's a chance I could feel better. Yeah. And I, I would challenge people, uh, maybe s s repeat the question. So what tips do you guys have to help us do the things that we know we're supposed to do? Right. So, okay, Pastor Mark here, because to continually to do the same thing that you're doing now and expect a different result in the future will not happen. That's the definition of insanity. So, and I have watched countless people do this. They knew early in their walk, I should make a change. I should start to exercise. If you don't, the devil and life will slowly suck you into a place where you won't even be able to do those things. So Absolutely. while you're able, mm -hmm. you should get on it because the other picture can really be, I want to, I guess I'm trying to scare you into it. It can get desperate. Most people don't end up in a total wrecked life by intention. They slowly didn't do something they should have, and then they didn't do it a little longer. Because life is really serious. So take it seriously. For the people who didn't like the just do it, it wasn't my slogan, I just borrowed it. <laughs> but for those who need a different approach, maybe set a realistic goal for yourself and then tell someone you're going to do it. So you have accountability. accountability. That's huge. You know, I'm gonna walk tomorrow morning, so ask me if okay. I walk. All right. Absolutely. Okay. That sounds good. You know, um, and having someone just encouraging, how did your walk go? Oh, I didn't get it. Oh, you can do it. You can do it. Find it's a good accountability over. partner that, that, that will actually ask you. Yep. I, have, I have a comment, and then how many more questions do we have? None. All right, I got a comment, and if you want one more final question, you got to type quick. Here's a comment. With some of the social media slash uh, conversation that's negative, political stuff, should I wear a mask or not? I kind of don't want to. What about the idiots that only wear it under their nose? All these potential conversations that can go from conversation to conflict, which sucks the energy out of us emotionally. Here's my advice. Decide your camp. Like, it's okay to have a belief in what the proper way to inaugurate the president is. It's okay to have opinion, but don't always share it. Quick example, just a couple nights ago, I was sitting with uh, some family members. We come out on different opposite ends uh, politically, and I managed the conversation knowing if we talk about this and this, at the end of this evening, I'm gonna get in my car and I'm gonna be mad or frustrated or, or all that stuff. And so in the midst of the conversation, I just remember thinking, there are some things, even if you talk about, I'm not going there. And long story short, I had a pleasant evening with some friends and I left not tied into a bunch of knots just because there were some things like, just don't talk about that stuff. I think I have one final question. Oh, good one. And it might be a good one to wrap the night up on, but uh, Eileen asks, friendships are stained by COVID especially if one is not worried by it and the other is over the top worried. What is your recommendation on how to maintain healthy friendships during this time? So how do you maintain healthy relationships when some friends are not concerned at all and others are maybe too worried? It's gonna sound like you gave this answer. Oh, is it gonna be cute? It's gonna be cute, you ready? Okay, yeah love one another the, it's hard to love people who are different from us i'm human i struggle with it all of you guys out there struggle with it but literally to, to, to love one another means we accept those who are different from us and we meet them right where they're at just like christ does for us and i know that sounds like the jesus answer oh that here. was so sweet Isn't that cute that wasn't cute that was sweet well i'm going right. to give you a harsher answer so this, so some of you need to hear that. Some of you might. So what do you say? Love one another. Here's what I'm going to say. <laughs> I wish I could make it connect with. Um, find a new friend. <laughs> That's opposite. But here's what I mean. For some of you who are super fearful and you're with somebody who irritates you because they're not... 
then you can try to keep that friendship. You need to find some people that are in your camp and hang out with them or Zoom with them. So if I was a person who was not afraid of COVID and my best friend was super afraid of it, I would open the door to some other relationships beside that one best friend. So for some of you need to, to have some openness to a different friendship. And maybe that's what God's doing in the midst of it is be cool if some of us ended up with two or three more friends in our life because of this so challenge. So are, are you saying we should stop being friends with them because they're different from us? I, my primary emphasis is you, because we're talking about our own emotional health, you've got to have friendships that you connect with and help Absolutely. give you health. Absolutely. And so I would emphasize not to cut that person off, but Correct. open a door to someone's friendship mm-hmm. that that gives you more uh, life. Absolutely. So that was cute and sweet. Thank you. And I think we're done. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, and Jeremiah, thanks a ton for Absolutely. giving My your time. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in today. All right. Thanks, Vineyard. Have a great night.